Hello, hello. I know it's been a while since I've been, it's been a while since I've been live. You know, I posted something in my community section. I want to thank all you ladies who helped me feel so much better. The support that so many of you show means a lot to me. And it's great to know I'm not alone. So it's still Black History Month. Y'all know I had to bring something for Black History Month. And Some of you have mentioned this lady, Maria W. Stewart. You mentioned her and I read what you say. So I decided to research her. I decided to research this woman. And she is another black woman who was silenced. She's someone who spoke up during the days of slavery. Okay. She spoke up and it was during a time where women were not even allowed to speak in front of men. And she said some things that a lot of people didn't want to hear. Some things they loved, but some things they hated. In fact, she gave a speech towards black men in Boston that ended her career just about in public speaking. This woman is important because... She spoke up and was able to tell her truth. And during a time, I mean, this is 1833. And she said something that the black men were throwing things at her, her speech. They didn't like what she said. I'm going to read to you her speech, what she said that upset them so much. But this is not the first woman I've shown you who have said some things. Remember Nanny Barrow's? Nanny Burroughs, check out my video, The 13 Things the Black Man Must Do to Basically Finally Make It in Society. They don't talk about her, and what she said rings true 100 years later. So, hey, Eve Jean. Hey, Hello Kitty. Hey, Relationship Bunny. Hey, Diamond Princess. So, all right, excuse me, y'all. Let's see. I want to share some information about who she is. 
Maria W. Stewart. Maria W. Stewart. Okay, I have her picture. I'm leaving on the left. All right. Let me make this bigger. She was born Maria Miller, the child of free African American parents in Hartford, Connecticut. In 1806, at the age of three, she lost both her parents and was sent to live with a minister and his family. She continued as a servant in that home until she was 15 years old without receiving any education, formal education. Between the ages of 15 and 20, she attended Sabbath school before church service on Sundays and developed a lifelong affinity for religious work. Okay, so she was born to free African American parents, free slaves. In 1806, she lost her parents at three years old. She's working as a servant, indentured servant for um, a minister and his family. And between the ages of 15 and 20, she she likes doing religious work. She likes working in the church and things like that. All right. Okay. On August 10th, 1826, she married James W. Stewart, an independent shipping, shipping agent, before the Reverend Thomas Paul, pastor of the African Meeting House in Boston, Massachusetts. Their marriage only lasted three years, and they didn't have any children together. He died in 1829. Okay, the executors of his estate deprived her as the widow of any inheritance. So she didn't get anything. The moment spurred Stewart to begin thinking about women's rights and the inequities they faced. However, James had served in the War of 1812, and eventually a law passed allowing veterans' widows to their husbands' pensions. Okay, yeah, so she got something. So let's get started. Here's some more information about her. She died in 1879. She was born in 1803. She was a freeborn African American who became a teacher, a journalist, a lecturer, an abolitionist, a women's rights activist, the first known American woman to speak to a mixed audience of men and women, white and black. She was also the first African American woman to make a public to make public lectures as well to lecture about women's rights and make public anti-slavery speeches, which was very courageous, especially during that time. All right, so the Liberator, which was, you know, like a news article type of thing, the Liberator published two pamphlets by her, Religion and the Pure Principles of Morality, the sure foundation of which we must build. Okay. In February, now this is what this main thing I'm sharing today. In February 1833, she addressed Boston's African, African Masonic Lodge, which soon ended her brief lecturing career. Her claim was that black men lacked ambition, and requested courage. It caused an uproar among the audience. Okay? And Stewart decided to retire from giving lectures. That's what they do to black women. Look at how Snoop Dogg came at Gale. They try to ruin any black woman who tries to, You, they think she's coming against them. She's really trying to help them. Now, I understand it can get you pretty upset. She said they lack courage and ambition. I told y'all Nanny Burroughs was saying the same thing. Listen to these women. They were there. Y'all have this, not y'all in the audience, but a lot of people have this warped view of slavery. These women were there. Okay? And a black black people can ruin other black people. They do it all the time. They got cancel culture. 
They don't like nothing you say. They will try to ruin you. Okay. So she decided to retire from giving lectures. Seven months later, she gave a farewell address at a schoolroom in the African Meeting House. After this, she moved to New York City, then to Baltimore, and finally Washington, D.C., where she worked as a school teacher, and then um, at Freedman's Hospital, where she eventually died. This was a woman who was trying to speak up, and she got silenced by Black men because she dared to speak about them not having courage or ambition during that time. But she. She freak. She ain't the first one. I got the Nanny Barrels video, y'all. Check it out. She's not the first one. So clearly, we love. I, I remember a black woman in my chat said, "Oh my God, I thought we started screwing up in the 1970s. Uh, uh. This go way back. This shit go way back." But we refuse to believe it because we want to think we were so oppressed that everything was stacked up against us. That's why the men were ignorant. That's why they didn't have jobs. That's why they didn't work. That's why they don't show up to work and do their jobs. I'm telling you, these reveal it. So let's continue. This was 1833. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read you. Now, listen, it was a very long speech, so I'm not going to read the entire thing, but I'm going to read enough. In 1833, Maria W. Stewart, this was one of her lectures. She addressed black men at the African Masonic Hall. Interesting, they, they're claiming to be Masons, you know. You know, the white men do the Masonic stuff, the Illuminati and all that other stuff. But these were probably up. These were probably black men who thought they were doing something, who had money, who thought they were the elite Masonic black men. How dare she come up in here and say we don't have courage and that we ain't doing a damn thing? How dare she? They threw tomatoes, I heard at her. So. Let me get a little drink. Y'all hear this? I got my Sprite. I need to take a, a little sip real quick. You know how dangerous? I mean, it had to be a little scary. I mean, this is during the days where slavery, you know, still exists and stuff. And to go in a room with these black men and say these things, it was too much for them. And they ended, just almost ended her career. Okay, so, excuse me, let's get started. I'm going to read her speech, and I'm going to dissect her speech. And this is actually the first time I'm reading this thing with all of you, okay? Let me make sure I got the right thing. Okay. Let's get started. She said, Deep, decided, and heartfelt interest. When I cast my eyes on the long list of illustrious names that are enrolled on the bright annals of fame amongst the whites, I turn my eyes within and ask my thoughts. Where are the names of our illustrious ones? Where are the black people? It must certainly have been for the want of energy on the part of the free people of color that they have been long willing to bear the yoke of oppression. So she's saying she sees these white people's names plastered on things for their accomplishments but where are our great black men? The reason I say black men is because she was she she she's talking about the black men. Let's be honest. Back in the 1830s, the men were ruling. It's all about the men during that time. Women were still oppressed. So she sees these great black white men. 
where are the names of our illustrious ones? Now, if you would think, people would say, what do you mean? This was 1833. Of course, there are no black men who are illustrious and on plastered on things. They're oppressed. They're oppressed. They're oppressed. But like someone I done told you said in the chat, she was free. We forget that there were free black people. They were not slaves. We love to pretend like every damn black person was a slave suffering. No, they weren't. Even now, you hear black people go on and on about slavery. They don't ever mention you got a bunch of free people running around that ain't even enslaved no damn where. But they don't talk about that. They want to paint the image of long suffering for every black person. Okay. So, that's what she said. These things have fired my soul with holy indignation and compelled me thus to come forward and endeavor to turn their attention to knowledge and improvement. For knowledge is power. I would ask, is it blindness of mind or stupidity of soul? or the want of education that has caused our men who are 60 or 70 years old never to let their voices be heard nor their hands be raised in behalf of their color. Oh, Lord. She said, knowledge is power. She's asking, are they stupid? They don't want education? That the black men who are 60 and 70 years old, you don't hear nothing from them. They're not doing nothing. That's what she said. Or has it been in fear of offending the whites? You know, they scared. Yeah, they scared. A number of them were scared. That's why they never killed for the black woman. They never wanted to die and risk death and go to war like the natives did. But anyway. Or has it been fear of offending the whites? If it has, a ye, a ye fearful ones, throw off your fearfulness and come forth in the name of the Lord and in the strength of God of justice and make yourselves useful and active members in society. For they admire a noble and patriotic spirit in others. And should they not admire it in us? If you are men, convince them that, that you possess the spirit of men. And as your day, so shall your strength be. Have the sons of Africa have no souls. Hold on. She, she's basically telling them, rise up, stop being a punk. Show you have love that you're willing to. You know, I always said, I don't know why they never tried to go back to Africa. I don't know. They they went in the Civil War. They they went in every war and then they claimed they're oppressed. So if they are oppressing you and they don't like you, why are you fighting their wars? Why don't you just try to have a campaign to go back to Africa? But she's saying they don't do nothing. They're not active members of society. They have no courage. They're scared of white men. They don't value education. She says, if you are men, convince them that you possess the spirit of men. You're, you don't act like a man. And as your day, so shall your strength be. Have the sons of Africa no souls. Ooh, that's pretty deep. That's pretty deep. Now, this is what she said to them in Boston, that they had an uproar. She's saying, you know, do you have a soul? It's kind of interesting she said that because so-called white racist people, the white racists used to say that too. They used to say that niggas ain't got no soul. Sorry for the N-word, but that's what they would say. Because they thought to themselves, I am beating you. I'm taking your woman. I'm doing anything I want to you and you don't stand up to me like a man. You know, the natives fought. We fought other men, but you don't fight. Do you have a soul? Are you a man? I know that's deep, but that's what she's saying, too, in a nice way. 
Now, I don't know all of what she was seeing, but it was enough for her to say this at a speech. All right. It must have been the want of ambition and force that has given the whites occasion to say that our natural abilities are not as good and our capacities by nature are inferior to theirs. They boldly assert that did we possess a natural independence of soul and feel a love of liberty within our breasts, some one of our sable race long before this would have testified it notwithstanding the disadvantages under which we labor. Let me try to dissect what she's saying. Let's see. Uh, not as good. Our capacities by nature are inferior to theirs. Did we possess a natural independence of soul and feel a love of liberty within our breasts? I don't know. Okay, let's see. We have made ourselves appear altogether unqualified to speak in our own defense. Oh, my Lord. Okay, we have made ourselves appear altogether unqualified, not smart enough to speak in our own defense, and therefore looked upon as objects of pity and commiserations. Oh, my God, it's the same thing today. They pity some of us. They really do. We're the begging race. We always, they got to come to save us and fix us and shit. You know, she's saying, you know, we up here unqualified to speak in our own freaking behalf. We don't know what we be talking about. I see it all the time. When black people, these rappers, they go to rallies and start giving speeches and these rappers don't know what the hell they're talking about. And she's saying these people pity us at this point. She says, we have been imposed upon, insulted, and der derated on every side. And now, if we complain, it's considered as the height of imperitance. We have suffered ourselves to be considered as dastards, cowards, mean, faint-hearted wretches. And on this account, oh, mm -mm -mm. not because of our complexion, Many despise would gladly spurn us from this presence. You know, what's interesting is that Nanny Burroughs said the same thing. If you watch my Nanny Burroughs thing, she says the black man keeps hiding behind his skin complexion as to why nobody likes him. But it's his bad habits. He can't work a job. He's fighting on the job. He doesn't know how to dress for the right occasion. He doesn't like education. He fights with people. She said it has nothing to do with your skin complexion. People would honor you if you act like a member of society who respects yourself. And this is what she's saying. We're seen as cowards, faint-hearted, mean. She's talking about the men specifically with this speech. And it's not because of your skin complexion. It's about character. I'm not saying that there weren't people who don't hate you because of your skin complexion. They can tell you black. We know, especially in the South, that type of stuff existed. But these women lived in the South. We paint a certain picture of slavery in the 1830s that is not actually accurate. Okay, let's go. Got two more to show you. Feel they no ambitious desires? Shall the chains of ignorance forever confine them? Damn, girl, Maria. Feel they no ambitious desires? Shall the chains of ignorance forever confine them? They're ignorant now. You talk to even some of these black mammies type of women, they are ignorant now. They like it. They hide behind slavery. They paint a certain picture. They refuse to even admit that it's the black people that's stopping black people at large. Shall the chains of chains of ignorance forever confine them? Shall the ins okay? Shall the inspid appellation of clever Negroes or good creatures any longer content them? Where can we find amongst ourselves the man of science? a philosopher, 
an able statesman, a counselor at law. Show me our fearless and brave, our noble, gallant ones. Even today, you got a sprinkle of black men who are doctors and philosophers and scientists. A sprinkle, even today. She said, where are our men of science? Where are our philosophers? The counselors, the lawyers. The black man in 2022 was running around saying education don't matter. These are the same men who are supposed to lead us and compete with other men who are scientists and doctors and lawyers. And he's saying education don't matter. You want to go to a man who didn't complete high school to do your surgery? Knowing things and having knowledge so that you can rule the world don't matter. That's what the black man is saying. Education don't matter. But yet the men who rule the world are educated and he's supposed to compete with other races of men who are educated, but he's running. He's the only one that runs around says saying education don't matter. The only one who embraces being stupid and that having a brain don't matter. He's the only one. And you got foolish black women running around agreeing with them. Bunch of idiots. Some of them. I mean, don't get me wrong. We don't all get educations, but that don't mean you can't read. That don't mean you can't even be self-taught and learn something. But to say it doesn't matter as men who have to compete with other men and then have the nerve to quote knowledge is power. Well, yeah, knowledge is education, reading books and learning math and learning how to operate on people. I don't want a fucking idiot leading the me. Okay. So she said, show me our fearless and brave. Show me the black men who got courage, our noble, gallant ones. Where are our lecturers on natural history, our critics and useful knowledge? There may be a few such men amongst us, but they are rare. Oh, my God. 1833. She says we got a few of the black men who are in who are lawyers, doctors, philosophers, okay, historians, men who actually contribute to society, who have knowledge. We got a few of them, but they're rare. Honey, it's 2022. We got a few of them and they're rare. In 2022, honey, it ain't changed much. In the same way they tried to ruin your career, look at how they hate on, hate on us on the internet. Look at how they did Gail. They try to shut us up even now. They don't want the truth. She says it's true. Our fathers bled and died in the Revolutionary War. And others fought bravely under the command of Jackson in the defense of liberty. But where is the man that has distinguished himself in these modern days by acting holy? in the defense of African rights and liberty. There was one, although he sleeps, his memory lives. Okay, let's see. So this is the last part. She said a whole mouthful and they hated her for it. I am sensible that there are many highly intelligent gentlemen of color in the United States, and the force of whose arguments, doubtless, I should discover my inferiority. But if they are blessed with wit and talent, friends and fortune, why have they not? Oh, hold, hold on, hold on. But if they are blessed with wit and talent, friends and fortune, why have they not made themselves men of eminence by striving to take all the reproach that is cast upon the people of color, and in endeavoring to elevate and the woes of their brethren in bondage. So she's saying, if like we say now, if all these so-called good black men exist who are doing stuff, where are they? They not making themselves known and they not trying to help other black men. That's the same shit now. This is talk without effort is nothing. You are abundantly capable, gentlemen, of making yourselves men of distinction, making yourselves known as black men. 
And this gross neglect on your part causes my blood to boil within me. She's saying y'all have the opportunity to set yourselves apart, to show you are men, to represent as black men. Who are you? What are you about? What are you about to help your black men out? What are you about to help black women? Who are you? But you don't do nothing. That's what she said. And it makes my blood boil. That's what she said. My God, here's the grand cause which hinders the rise and progress of the men of color. It is their want of laudable ambition and, rec and requisite courage. They have no courage. That's what she said. And after she said this, well, this is what happened. Stewart only gave four speeches, but they made an impression on both their audiences and their critics. Not only did her words constitute a powerful call to action, but they challenged assumptions that black people and women were illiterate, uneducated, and ignorant. At least one account of Stewart's speeches states that her black male audience jeered her off stage and threw rotten tomatoes at her. That's the Boston one that I just read. They threw rotten tomatoes at her and got her off stage. In any case, she felt so threatened by their reaction to her speeches, she no longer felt welcome in Boston. As Garrison put it, she encountered the opposition even from her Boston circle of friends that would have damped. Okay, so even, you know, this is what happens to you as a black woman. Even her friends turned on her. You can't say nothing about the black man. Even in 2022, you say anything about the black man, the so-called black community that is in shambles, that is dysfunctional, and that is fucked up will turn on you because you got to protect the baby maker. He's there to pump out babies. He don't marry you. He don't marry you. He ain't putting you in a house. He ain't fixing your credit. He ain't building hospitals and schools for you. He, he In fact, he, he the only race of man that's running around saying being smart don't matter. But you supposed to protect him because his job is to knock you up. That's his job, to knock you up so you can make another black boy. That's his job, and that's your job, to get knocked up. Protect the black man at all costs who don't even like to do anything. Protect him, protect him, protect him, so he can make you pregnant. That's all. That's, that's what you do. Don't talk about him. He's oppressed. The cops is killing him. You can't say none of this. Shit, they said it in the damn 1800s. But you ain't listened then. 2022, years later, and we can say the same shit. And her friends turned on her. Because how dare you say this to them? It's the fucking truth. But they not ready for that. They ain't ready for the truth. They ain't ready for no real to be told. Man, they not. And I, I swear to you, I hate to say this. I predict in the year 2000, you know what? It's 2022. How much you want to bet? I'm going to put this out here. In the year 2300, how much you want to bet they're going to be saying the same shit they say now? How much you want to bet? They always going to blame it on the white man. It's always the white man's fault. It's always the white man's fault. Even though these black women, Nanny Barrows and Maria Stewart, is telling you, they telling you what the fuck is going on with black men. Okay. Let me read this. This is her death. Apparently, after losing her teaching position in New York, she moved to Baltimore in 1852 or in 1853, and she taught privately. In 1861, she moved to Washington, D.C., where she taught at a school during 
the Civil War. In around 1870, she was appointed to the head housekeeping at Freedmen's Hospital Asylum in Washington, D.C. Following Sojourner Truth in the post, she managed the cleaning staff in 18. You know, it's a shame how these black women die, their voices unheard, the truth they tell. In 1878, when she was 75, she began receiving an $8 a month widow's pension. Because of her husband's service in the U.S. Navy in the War of 1812, she used the pension to publish the uh, meditations from the pen of Mrs. Maria W. Stewart. Okay, the book. Okay, she died December 1879, December 17th, in the Freedmen's Hospital. So. I wanted to share, I wanted to share who she was, thanks to my subscribers, of course, because it's not just about what she said to black men. She had courage. This was a time where women, again, were not even allowed to speak in front of men and mixed crowds, as they said. You know how much courage it took to go to a Masonic lodge with these black men who probably think they're doing something. A room full of them and tell them what I just read to you, what she said. You don't know how you're going to be received. According to the report, they threw rotten tomatoes at her. Because they don't want to be told the truth. Even right now, they're so focused on the police and so-called being targets that they're blind. When I spoke to someone recently about how I felt on certain topics, and I mentioned that black women get killed every five to six hours, this woman literally told me, I don't care. I don't care because cops is killing them and the injustice that's going around and you need to be supporting. I'm supporting black women. The way you see these stories with the police, you would be, it's like, first of all, black men are not getting killed by the cops every fucking day. Black men are getting killed by other black men every day, every week. So stop the delusional bullshit just because you see some news articles and news stories on the, t on the TV trying to convince you they all hunting them. No, they not. And does that take away the truth? We're supposed to deny the truth and protect their ego. They don't want the truth. They keep saying, we got to have a change. Bro, we need a change. We need a change. Well, why is it then when black women tell you stop killing each other? You don't have the courage. You ain't have the ambition. And you're not supporting education to better yourself. Oh, you anti-black now. It, really? There is no, I don't know if there's any hope for them, a good portion. They are very prideful, you know, too prideful. They are. They're like drunks who refuse to admit they're a drunk and keep drinking. And they want you to keep dating them and making their babies and while they just continue to be drunks and then blame everybody for why they're drunk. So. I wanted to share Maria Stewart, you know, this was a very important woman to share. And um, I wanted to share her with you. I'm happy I did. Now you know about her, who she is. You can research her all over the internet. What she said was a mouthful, but she's not the first to say it during the 1800s. Wake up. They were saying this back then. Listen to them. So, you know, black men are not going to listen. That's why they never talk about these women. They only talk about Harriet Tubman and Rosa Parks and stuff. They don't talk about the black women who challenged them, who actually said you ain't doing shit. They don't want to talk about these women. They want them to die in our memory or not even in our memory to forget about them so that you don't know they saying the same shit then that we saying now in 2022. Because it shows there might actually be something wrong with them. 
that they just don't change or listen a good portion. So I hope this woke you up today. It's Black History Month, damn it. And I'm sharing some some history today. So make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate all your support. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe again. Thank you, everyone who joined me. Spread this truth. Spread this knowledge. I hope I woke someone up today to some information. Okay, and this will help the black community, even black men. It helps because you reflect and think, wow, this was being said in 1830. Maybe we really did have the same ways that we have in 2022. Maybe they're not all lying. Maybe it's not the white man. Maybe it really isn't. So thank you, ladies. Bye, everyone. And if you want to support, where's my um thing? If you want to support me, here it is, the Cash App. I appreciate it. It helps support the channel. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye, everyone.